Polycystic ovary syndrome, or PCOS, is the most common endocrine condition affecting women of reproductive age. Worldwide, it affects on average 10% of women, and in Australia, the prevalence is 12 to 18%. PCOS symptoms can be wide ranging, but the main features are anovulation, such as infrequent or no periods, hyperandrogenism, such as elevated levels of male hormones, which can lead to unwanted male pattern hair growth, and polycystic ovary morphology which means an excess of small follicles are present in the ovaries. First ever internationally endorsed evidence-based guidelines covering all aspects of polycystic ovary syndrome, including its assessment, diagnosis and management, has been published in 2018. I am an author of this important guideline, along with others including Professor Helena Teague from Monash in Melbourne, who headed the project. This guideline engaged international healthcare provider, professional societies and consumer organisations. With multidisciplinary experts and women with polycystic ovary syndrome directly involved at all stages. The guideline aims to support women with PCOS and their healthcare providers to optimise the assessment and management of polycystic ovary syndrome. The diagnostic criteria for polycystic ovary syndrome are called the Rotterdam criteria and these have been endorsed recently by the 2018 PCOS guidelines. The Rotterdam criteria for polycystic ovary syndrome require a woman to exhibit at least two out of three diagnostic features. The first feature is anovulation or at least a reduction in ovulation. The second feature is clinical or biochemical hyperandrogenism clinical being the presence of hirsutism or acne and biochemical being the presence of raised levels of male hormones called androgens in the blood. Lastly, the third feature is polycystic ovaries seen on ultrasound. An additional important requirement is that one needs to have excluded other causes of anovulation and hyperandrogenism. Early diagnosis and treatment of polycystic ovary syndrome or PCOS is optimal and many PCOS traits are first visible in adolescence. However, diagnosis at this stage in life is challenging as several PCOS traits such as anovulatory cycles and acne are frequently observed in adolescence. The ultrasound finding of multiple follicles on the ovary is also a normal finding in adolescence and therefore ultrasound cannot be relied upon. Adolescents who have features of PCOS should be considered as having an increased risk and advised to be reassessed at or before full reproductive maturity, which is eight years post-menarche. Polycystic ovary syndrome is also associated with an increased risk of type 2 diabetes, impaired glucose tolerance and cardiovascular disease risk factors. So, women with polycystic ovary syndrome should have their glycemic status assessed at diagnosis and thereafter assessment should be performed every one to three years. Furthermore, women with polycystic ovary syndrome also have an increased prevalence of depressive and anxiety symptoms. Anxiety and depression should be screened for at diagnosis and if there are positive findings, patients should be referred to a suitably qualified health professional. Current treatments for polycystic ovary syndrome are dependent on the symptoms experienced by the individual woman. Lifestyle interventions including diet, exercise and behavioural strategies should be recommended in all those with polycystic ovary syndrome and excess weight. The combined oral contraceptive pill is usually the first line pharmacological management for irregular menstrual cycles and hyperandrogenism such as hirsutism. For women with polycystic ovary syndrome experiencing infertility, letrozole is now considered the first line pharmacological treatment. Unfortunately, we do not know what causes polycystic ovary syndrome, but if we did, then we could potentially cure this condition rather than just treating its symptoms. Recent research has discovered that hyperangiogenism likely plays an important role in the development of PCOS 
and the brain has now been put forward as a key target site in the body where these excess levels of androgens may be having an effect. This implies that a disruption in brain signalling may be where PCOS actually starts. And this is really exciting as it provides researchers with a new direction for the future development of targeted treatments that will hopefully treat the cause of PCOS. In summary, PCOS is a common condition affecting women worldwide, which is associated with a number of health consequences, including infertility, increased risk of cardiovascular disease risk factors and type 2 diabetes, and reduced emotional well-being. Therefore, it's important for both patients and clinicians to be educated about PCOS to ensure early diagnosis and appropriate management in order to prevent or reduce the risk of developing these health concerns.